So this is the first thing I found. What, what do you think about that? That's beautiful, man. That's either in, is that in uh, Oakland or is that uh, when we uh, clinched in uh, San Diego during the season? Now you're you're in your, your thing. That's, that's San you Diego. weren't playing. Is it San Diego? No, no, that's that's Oakland. Oakland. Oakland yeah. It's Oakland, yeah, because you were the one. That's when you guys jacket. put it away. <laughs> you mean yeah. you've won three world championships, two as a player, one as a manager. Did you ever take time to think back? What what got you there? What, what accomplishment it really is, or is that in time? You know, Gibby, I, I think it's uh, you're put into some circumstances surrounded by an incredible teammates, and you're a small part of that, and that allows you to take that step to, to have the opportunity to be on a championship team. So I don't look at anything I did personally that put me on those three championship teams, but I was a small part of what a team is about. And when you when everything's going in the right direction, it feels good. I also was on some losing teams, so you so know the dynamics actually, have to be right. We actually got along right there. When I went up there to hit off Eckersley, did you think I had a chance? Were you saying, "Oh, don't embarrass yourself"? Um, after seeing so I you, sat next to you. Yeah, after seeing you come to the you know into the ballpark and and the way you were moving around, um, I knew it was going to be on one leg. But I also knew, I said, I said, uh, Gibby's going to put the ball in play. I didn't think you were going to strike out there. I just felt like he's going to put the ball in play. And really, when Mike Davis stole second base, it changed, I think, your whole approach, too. I think you were just thinking, look at him, man, a single ties this thing up. I was trying to hit a little one over the shortstop's head, believe it or not. That's crazy. Were and you I, really? I hit it out, yeah. Yeah, but you remember, I remember Mel Didier in that meeting, too. Tell you us you remember how he put oh, yeah, he said? Yeah, if you get a three-t count on Eckersley, you're a left-handed hitter. Sure as I'm sure as I'm sitting here, you're going to get a three-two backdoor slider. It was in the book. I had the book. Yep. So I has my book, and he sent I me. I remember his that book meeting. I remember that away. meeting. Yeah. The last inning, now the game one. You made it out, and Hamilton made it out, right? Yes, I popped out, and uh, Jeff struck out, and then it came uh, Mike Davis. And I think the thing that helped us there was um, not knowing you could even hit because Dave Anderson was on deck. He had a couple home runs, didn't he? Dave? Yeah. I, mean, I think all between us, we had 32. <laughs> um, and he was, a hell of a, he was a hell of a stunt, man. Alfredo went down. Alfredo and he went played down, he for played for like, six weeks. Yeah, yeah. he did a Alfredo, hell of a job. He did. Okay, um, Mike Davis had played with Oakland the year before and hit, what, 25 home runs? Yeah, I think. And he I got know, hurt in spring training yes. to Puerto Rico. Yeah, so he walks Mike Davis, and then you come out, you know, um, to the plate. And, uh, and then Mike Davis, you know, ends up stealing... Stealing, I think it was on a 1-2 count, or was it 2-2? Two, two? I forget what one, it was. 1-2 or 2-2. Two, two, two. Yeah. I had two strikes right away. Right, I had two strikes two. first, two. Okay, steal second base and changes the whole course of that inning where you're just trying, like you said. Slap it over Slap there. it over there, put it in play. And, um, and you know, think about your swing after that. I know you don't want to talk about you, but uh, I'm going to talk about it for a second. If you just watch a regular speed and you go, oh, my God, he, he hit that thing with really one hand. But if you slow it down, and I did after, because I'm saying, how did he do it? You are, you, it was like. Just take one, that lasso. Yeah, it was right there, but you still had leverage. But it was like, you know, well, obviously you couldn't swing the bat the way you wanted to, but it was one in a million the way you could still keep it back long enough and have everything connected to where you could hit a ball that hard. And um, that was. Yeah, what I remember, <laughs> what awesome. I remember was the, the reversal of emotions. Yeah. Oh, that my was God. Like just from, so much fun it is isn't it and uh how about that crowd for 45 minutes in that game screaming like that's the thing i remember about that is first of all as you watch the highlights you see all the brake lights go off right the field. people want to leave early. right that stadium and dodger stadium gets loud that stadium was so loud i could barely hear the guys as we're going up to home plate and we're cheering and for 45 minutes after that home run it was like that and we're going like this is incredible. I mean, this is like, you know, it was like Casey at the bat, and we, it was one of those things where you know when it happened, and it's huge. Yeah, well. And I think the fact that we went out and finished the series off is what really. That was the coolest was, thing yeah. that I never really played, and you no, guys you finished, you finished off. Where does your philosophy of how you're going to manage a game come from? I think just from our experiences, you know, when you manage, I think, um, you know, you had the a lot of the same philosophies that we kind of, absorb as we continue to play the game and you have success and there's failures and you, you kind of have a feel on 
what works and what doesn't work. And you want, uh, we all want our players to play the same game, same way. We talked about this, aggressive on the base paths. Um, let's um, force the action. Uh, let's play uh, fundamentally sound defense. Play aggressive all the times, uh, all, the, all the time. And I think that's, um, you know, it's the baseball you grew up with. It's, it's uh, you probably got a little more football in you than I did, but. By the same token, it's it's what you want to put into the team. It's just uh, the experience that we had, I think, as we played. But when you look at you and the style of play, you were, you were a catcher, you had a responsibility, you were a contact hitter with the ball in play, you had determination, um, you knew you had a responsibility for your pitchers. You loved to run the bases. I mean, yes. you weren't fast. I mean, you loved to run the bases. Mm -hmm. Where did that, is that just natural, or did somebody no, kick you in the butt one day? In the Dodger organization, in the minor leagues, that's the way we were told, and it didn't matter, it didn't matter how, what your foot speed was, if there was a chance for you to go first and third, um, you had to be on third base. And if you weren't, every manager in the organization uh, would tell you, look at man, you gotta make a turn, read the play, get to third base. That aggressive base style was in the Dodger organization going all the way back to the 60s, and you had, you know, teams that had a scratch for every run. And a lot of the, our coaches were the product of, the, of, of of seeing those teams and playing there. You know, guys like Ducky the John and uh, Dick, um, you know, Dick McLaughlin and um, you know Del Crandall who played in the major leagues um, with with Milwaukee, um, but had seen the style of play the Dodgers had through the 60s. Um, that was put into us. So. Maybe we weren't, gonna, we weren't going to go out there and, and steal uh, 30 bases like some other guys on the team that can run. I played with Rudy Law and Maxie Venable, a lot of guys that could run, Bobby Mitchell, Ron Renicki. Uh, but they said, look, when you get the opportunity to read a pitcher and you can cheat and get your jump, um, there's a big basis that you can help uh, your team win a game. And maybe it's going to be maybe it's going to be five times a year, but be ready for it. So that kind of that kind of style was put into us in the minor leagues in the Dodger organization. Again, I know that you you love to do it, and we also get a kick out of it. But you know, people don't do their homework. It's it's a big advantage to this day. It's a component. You get into the the World Series, or you need to try and get into the World Series. It comes down to one play. Mike Sosha on first, he can't run, but you got a guy that's not paying attention. You get a running lead, and I know you you you, you believe in that too. Yep. I thought an amazing thing looking back. I remember um, when I came up, you spoke Spanish. And I did, you know, I read about it um, years ago, and I refreshed my memory. Who t did you do that on your own? Because you did that for Fernando, didn't you? I did it before Fernando. I played winter ball in Dominican Elise in Santo Domingo for two years, and I remember being down there. And we had Latin players in the minor leagues, and you you pick up words here or there, you know, as you yeah, talk to your you buddies. Do. But when I got to the Dominican, it was like you went into a local restaurant. Um, menus are in Spanish. Everything's in Spanish. Uh, and so to order, you wanted to learn how to speak the language. And um, uh, it, it, it's just something that I took to naturally. And I'm certainly not fluent, but I can hold my own in the conversation. And uh, it helped me uh, as, as you get in with players like Fernando and, uh, you know, a guy like Pedro Guerrero when we first started. Um, uh, you know, we first started in the minor leagues, uh, spoke very little English. And he picked up English like that as, you know, we would talk back and forth. And, uh, uh, you know things like that. You just you know just you 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 acquire it, and um, it helps when you're communicating. Yeah. I've tried to bait you a couple times into talking about yourself or your responsibility. You're so humble about it, which is what we have in common. Uh, where did that come from? Is that just something that you had a mentor told you it was from your parents? No, my mom. Man, my mom would tell me, you know, as I started to play baseball and I was kind of good at it. I was playing football, and even though I wasn't going to be able to play D1 football. I was a good high school player, but you're always saying, hey, Michael, you know, you got to think, you got to feel you're the best at everything, but just don't tell anybody about it. And um, it stuck with me from a, you know, from a, from a young kid. Uh, it stuck with me to say, you know, inside, you know, you, you play with as much confidence as anybody that's ever put a uniform on. And I never heard you talking about yourself like when we were in the clubhouse playing, I did this or I did that, even afterwards. I think it's the same thing. I, I didn't do a lot of the things that you did on the baseball field, but whatever accomplishments I had, hey, I always thought I was going to go out there and play well, but I wasn't going to tell anybody about it. And she it came from my mom. She just said, hey, you better believe you're the best inside, but just don't tell anybody about it. I, I think if a guy has a bad game, his efforts are just as appreciated as, as, as ours. I mean, oh, it's, yeah. you just got to stay humble. And if you can take your success and spread some of that to a teammate who's down, you're a better team.
And I think so. You're that's right. really important. You're right. You've been married for how many years? 33. Uh, We're going to be 34. I'll be going on 33 mm -hmm. in a game that's it's tough. It's tough on families. So yeah. we've got great yeah. women. No People constantly tell me that I'm over my skis, and I would say you are too. How does that happen? I, got, I know, uh, I, my, I know where I, how I got the hook in. Uh, I'll tell you, man. At one time, when I had a little bit of hair and I was skinnier, for, I think I was... from Philly, you were hot, hot shit. Um, I don't want to talk about myself, but I was all right. <laughs> I wasn't. I was all right. Same with you. And you had hair, you know, and you had that blonde no, no. hair flowing. Mine's easy shut. to trace. Well, is it really? Was it? When I hit the home run, I became way better looking. <laughs> the one in 84 and the one in 88. 84, yeah. Just like say, that. You were married in 88 already, right? Yeah, but, yeah. I, but my wife loved me even more. But she loved you more, yeah. Well, I don't know. I was already had a baby when, and married and had a baby when I hit the one off a dock, so I don't know when Ann saw me. But um, we're definitely, you know, I think it's, I, I, you know, yeah, I'm over my skis. Not because she's pretty, she's beautiful. Because great person. She's a great person. And uh, same to be said about you. Um, you know, I know uh, you and Joanne, you guys have been together a long time. Um, there's a core that keeps us, especially we travel so much and there's so much distractions that can happen uh, just from being away from home. You know, they raise the kids, they do this. Families, they do that, families there. Families first. So that's what I'm looking forward to.